In this video, I'll list specific steps you can take to break into cybersecurity governance risk and compliance. I'll break those steps into Harvard's recommended ratio to grow yourself faster of 70% experience, 20% relationships, and 10% education. I'll also bring in some timeless lessons from the Fast and Furious franchise and other great resources. As usual, links to all my references are in the description. If you're new to the channel, I work in GRC on a team that does SOC 2, ISO 27000, TSACs, and other cybersecurity compliance assessments. If you're not familiar with other parts of a typical GRC service catalog, we also run a risk register, third-party infosec due diligence, policy standards and directives, customer questionnaires, security awareness campaigns, executive scorecards, and other awesome things that protect and enable the business. This video is a sequel to some other ones I've put out there doing some myth-busting and ranting about why GRC is awesome and underrated, especially if you're in the right industry, company, and culture. And maybe there's a GRC team at your company that isn't doing a great job. You could be the person to turn it around. You know, make it your own Cinderella story. In a prior video, I mentioned the first three steps I took to break into GRC from finance in 2020. It was immersion in books, podcasts, and blogs, target a job and identify skill gaps, and then make a 70-20-10 career development plan, which I'll get into more detail with today. Since posting that video, I've been getting quite a few questions asking for more details, which is amazing. Thank you, and please keep the comments coming. For an agenda today, and I've got clickable chapters in the description, there's the growth cycle, determine your from to, find skills from job postings or cyberseek, and finally, set goals to get those skills in the categories of education, experience, and relationships. Starting off with number one, the growth cycle. In this article, a simple way to map out your career ambitions, it says that to grow yourself faster, the research is clear. Use a combination of on-the-job, social, and formal learning, known as the 70-20-10 model. The first thing that's interesting here when we're talking about InfoSec careers is that it's not all certs. In fact, it's 90% not certs. Second thing that stands out to me, and, and quoting the article, think of growth as a cycle, where you successfully perform, get feedback, and perform again even better. So I like the broad strokes of that, but I actually think it's too sugar-coated. Yes, it's a cycle where feedback leads to better performance, but no, I wouldn't expect to successfully perform something well the first time. Uh, learning curves aren't easy. So for more candor and telling us what we need to hear and not what we want to hear, we need Ray Dalio, the billionaire hedge fund CEO and leadership guru. Raised into radical candor and radical transparency, which can be very uncomfortable, but it's how good people and companies get to be great. And it works well in an environment of trust, respect, and psychological safety with your manager. You can see in Ray's diagram, he says that step two out of the five-step process to get what you want out of life is problems. Right off the bat, you can expect discomfort and failure. Growth is hard. But the key is not to get discouraged, be persistent, and keep iterating. Just keep showing up. Next, it says here that the first step to grow is to determine your from to. So fire up Notion, Google Docs, wherever you write stuff down, and at the top of the page, write out career development plan, target job, GRC analyst. Next, what skills do you need to get there? And try to put it into goals for three months, six months, one and two years to be a GRC analyst. What do you need to do? How do you get those skills? Also, write down on the page, what's your goal in 10 years? And how is GRC analyst going to get you to that job? Writing this down is going to get you organized, get your focus and energy in the right direction. And this document you're producing is also going to be a great icebreaker for coaching conversations with your manager or mentors, or both. After you write down your target job description with a timeline, the next career development plan step is to inventory skills, like I've, I've just been saying. What do you have and what do you need? Now, to find out what the required skills are for the job, the best place to look is going to be job postings. So fire up one of the popular job posting sites, get hunting for something that energizes you, and consider not just the job title, but the industry, company size, and location that you're targeting. A super helpful reference that I use myself it was this uh, Your Cyber Path Mind Map, which is out on Twitter. It breaks down different types of employer, consulting, non-tech, tech, self-government, size, large, small, and some other factors you should consider to narrow down where you want to focus. Another great place to figure out the skills you need is cyberseek.org, which aggregates lots of job postings into summaries. Under Career Pathways, Entry Level, I'll start with IT Auditor, which is part of my prior job in Sarbanes-Oxley Compliance. From 6,092 job openings, it says the average salary is 99K, and it seems to indicate that a degree is a big requirement. Well, what if you don't have a degree? 
A great thing about cybersecurity, uh, more so than other in industries, arguably, like accounting, is that degrees are less of a barrier. If you have hands-on keyboard experience and have built cool projects to reduce cyber risk, that's going to count for a lot. It's not how you stand beside your car, it's how you race your car. For more on this concept, watch The Fast and the Furious, obviously. Also check out Darknet Diaries episode 60, Doggy G. It's about the meritocracy of bug bounties, has a very inspiring story. Top certifications requested for IT Auditor are CISA, CIA, CISP, CPA, CISM. There it is. This is the answer to the number one question hiring managers are asked, and I've asked hiring managers myself. What cert should I get? Uh, the answer is not one size fits all. Of course, it depends on your circumstances and the target, but a good source to guide you and be your compass is the job postings. Don't go for a cert unless you see it on the job posting for something that gets you excited as a role that you want to, to work in. So of the, the ones on the screen here, I'd recommend CISA, CISP, and CISM. If you're looking for GRC, I'd say that CIA and CPA are great if you have them. But if you don't, focus on other areas that have, uh, are faster to get and lower cost and have a higher return on investment for this specific target of GRC. Top skills requested, auditing, accounting, internal auditing, internal controls, risk analysis, finance, information systems, project management, public accounting. In this list, numbers one, three, five, seven, and eight are great to highlight or bold and think about how you can develop skills in these areas or even get closer to them. So put those goals in the relationship and experience sections of your CDP and think about people, tasks, conferences, Discord servers, blogs, volunteering, YouTube channels, anything that can help you get closer to these. For example, does your company have a GRC team or an audit department? And do you know those people? Could you call one up and say, hey, I'm working on my career development plan. I want to learn more about your department. Could you meet for 30 minutes to tell me about it and help me find ways to get relevant skills? Next, let's keep moving in CyberSeq to mid-level. I don't see GRC analysts, so I'm going to hit cybersecurity analysts, which I expect to be pretty close. If you want more granular precision out there to get closer to GRC analysts, another tool you can check out is the Cyber Career Pathway Tool from the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Careers and Studies. Check out, for example, Security Control Assessor or IT Program Auditor. Back in CyberSeq, Cybersecurity Analyst has 23,951 jobs with an average salary of 107K. It wants a degree 88% of the time, but not a deal breaker. Top search requested are CISP, GIAC Search, Security Plus, CISA, and CASM. Notice we didn't see CIA or CPA here. Top skills requested are number one, cybersecurity. Okay. Thanks. Very general. Uh, but I think the point is any cybersecurity experience you can get your hands on, it's going to help you uh, in this broad, uh, this broad area. Two, vulnerability. That one's a little bit more specific and, of course, will be helpful. Three, computer science. You've got to respect it. It's an advantage if you have it, but it's not a hard requirement in GRC, which is one of the least technical roles. So don't let it stop you. And also, I wouldn't adopt an attitude that I don't ever need it, you know, I respect it, I want to learn more about it, I know a little bit, and I, I, I aspire to learn more. Next, auditing, incident response, risk analysis, information systems, security controls, and SIM. Yes to all of these great skills that will help you break into GRC. Now, same drill as I told you for IT Auditor. You want to get closer to these skills. If you're at a company today with departments doing these things, try to network with those people and see how you can help each other. They can help you get the skills, you can help them advance their own goals. If you're a student or not employed, you can get after a search like Security Plus and CISA to start learning about these topics and practicing related skills. Wrapping up education, David Bomble's network training quotes Nelson Mandela saying, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I love that and I'll link to some really great cert up and motivational type videos from David Bomble and here's a sample. It's not important how many times you've stumbled it's not important how many times you've failed. What's important is how many times you pick yourself up and try and reach your goals. Isn't it interesting that David Bombal's advice is the exact same as Ray Dalio's? I think that's because this is a true principle that they've found works for them that can also work for you. Next, let's take a closer look at relationships and experience. I think you'll find that one unlocks opportunities with the other. They go hand in hand. As an example, there's mentoring. Not easy to approach someone that maybe doesn't know you exist to ask them to help advance your career. Fortunately, there's a guy who's received thousands of mentor requests over 20 years. 
Daniel Meisler, who has laid out the formula to do it properly in an article. So if you apply the principles in his article, which is basically how to make it win-win and how to optimize use of the mentor's time, it's going to work and you're going to find yourself in, with a response to an email or in a room or in a Zoom call with this mentor. Now that you're there, you need to keep in mind that there's three kinds of mentor, a coach, a sponsor, a connector. So focus on which of these things you're asking them to unlock. Also keep in mind that experiences is the biggest bucket in which we need to add skills uh, to grow ourselves faster. So I think one of the key goals to get out of mentors is how can, I, how can they help me get a stretch assignment? Another relationship idea is reverse mentoring. So if you're late or mid-career, there's no reason you wouldn't have a mentor, but you can also seek out junior people to teach you about the latest trends and tools and things that you haven't been ex as exposed to as they have. And uh, for example, I've had uh, pen testing co-op students really blow my mind with some eye-opening things they've shown me that taught me a lot. The hardest thing here is to find the time for this, but uh, one idea is quid pro quo. When they've asked you to be a mentor, carve out some time to ask your own questions. Next is job shadowing. If your company has a GRC team or maybe a security operations center, email them or talk to them about the water cooler and say, hey, can I please ride along with you for an hour of job shadowing? I want to learn more about your day-to-day -to, -day to round out my skills. And who knows, maybe we could find something that I could help out with as a stretch assignment, which would be helpful to both of us. Or you can take it a step further and propose your own stretch assignment. Say, hey, I heard you need to document your process. Can I help with that? My manager approved two hours a week. It would free you up to do more interesting things than documentation. Hopefully I'm painting a picture here that gives you ideas to fill up your CDP. I've also put together a laundry list of more thoughts that might be helpful for you to get where you want to go. Number one, Kip Boyle and Jason Dion's Udemy course, Irresistible, How to Land Your Dream Cybersecurity Position. I took this course and it was a key catalyst of my own breaking in. And then after I met those guys, number two, they've got a great podcast called Your Cyber Path, and I'm in episode 79 if you want to hear more about that. Three, Gerald Osier has a great GRC masterclass, and he also has an excellent and very successful YouTube channel and Discord server called Simply Cyber. Speaking of, of Gerald Osier, you can follow influencers like him on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, etc. My Mount Rushmore of people that I follow that I'd recommend to others. Daniel Meisler, Kit Boyle, Jason Dion, Gerald Osier, Jen Easterly, Malcolm Harkins, Rob Black, Naomi Brockwell, Naomi Buckwalter, David Bombel, Network Chuck. That's way more than the four heads on Mount Rushmore. It's hard to make a short list, but I have no hesitation offering these names as people to follow to learn more about the industry. Next, check out securitycreators.video. Also, uh, if you want to get into compliance, you can download for free and check out some cybersecurity frameworks and controls, NIST CSF, NIST 853A, or the SOC 2 Trust Services Criteria. Check them out and think of how you can apply them at your own company and think about what an audit might look like. Next, go to conferences and B-Sides events. And you're going to get out of these what you put into them. So I'd encourage you to get outside your comfort zone and strike up conversations and, and network. Of course, uh, make a home lab, do a virtual lab, start a blog, publish your projects at your own company, offer help with an audit, run a security awareness campaign, look at CISA's Secure Our World Top 4 Tips. And last, uh, here's an idea. Volunteer at a not-for-profit board of directors and help them with their basic cyber hygiene. So I could keep listing lots more things. I'm going to saw this topic off here for today. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe. If you didn't, I welcome feedback in the comments on how I can best help the community. Thanks for watching and good luck getting after it.